Hi everybody, I hope this video finds you well. Today's painting that we're going to do is H.W. Fox Hunt. It's a rock paint sip homage to a Winslow Homer painting. Uh, Winslow Homer, a renowned American artist that did a lot of painting and documenting in the uh, northeast part of the country up in Maine and such and this is a winter landscape but it's kind of a gray day out so I thought it'd be a, a good day to uh, to paint this uh, and it's one in our catalog that uh, we haven't really got to explore that much it, um, as you can see I kind of have the ghost of the image um, Hopefully that's not too off-putting. I tried this once before this week and messed up the recording. So I just lay, put a layer of gesso over, but uh, shouldn't be that big of an issue. So let's go over some of the materials that you're going to use. Again, you kind of make and do it what you got, but I'm going to kind of give you suggestions as to what you're going to need. Um, so on my palette, what I'm kind of dealing with is obviously I got white, even though a lot of the canvas is um, untreated and will kind of remain white. I got gray, a medium gray, a black, a little bit of sky blue, a phthalo blue or dark blue, a phthalo green or a dark green. I have a little metallic blue and that's kind of for effect. If you have something funky like that you want to use, you can. And I also have a brown, a sienna brown, and I also have a little copper for effect. Going to make my fox a little shiny, I guess. As far as brushes, again, you don't need many. If you have a one inch flat, you can kind of get away with that. Again, I like using my saber brush. But if you have a shader or an other sort of angle brush, you can use that. You'll need a round of any size, um, either number six, number nine, number eight, somewhere in that medium range. And then of course, to do a little of the detail work, I'm gonna use a liner brush. So let's kind of start with putting in this really brooding, stormy, New England sky. Um, if you wanted to start with water, and just kind of paddle a little water across your canvas, it's probably a good idea. So as, um, as a point of comparison, and I'm sure that there'll be several throughout the series of videos to any sort of paint video genre uh, to Bob Ross, the difference being we use water to activate the canvas and what Bob Ross actually used in a lot of his video was liquid clear because he did oil painting. So that does the same kind of thing and gives the canvas a kind of a glossy finish, silky finish, and it absorbs the oil paint. But in this instance, we're using acrylic, so water's just fine. So I'm going to start with a little gray of that medium gray. And I know I have a out of the tube gray, and I also have black and white, which makes gray. If you wanted to make a little different variation on your grays, you can do that. So I'm just taking a little out of this out of the two gray. And I'm going to kind of make my horizon line. I'm going to take some of that gray and begin to feather that in through the sky. A really gray, stormy New England day. I like to start in the corners. As you know, got that broad 
section of the brush, you also have the edge of the brush. And if you slow down, you kind of get these really narrow lines, thin lines. That works. Things I can do while I'm painting in a more natural process than when we're doing in paint classes where I, I'm kind of hoping that I don't lose everybody. You have um, the option of stopping and starting the video. So if I wanted to make some areas dark and kind of put some atmosphere, I'm kind of pulling into some black a little bit in that me medium gray. I'm making some areas a little darker. I'm just making these circular swirls. Pull a little bit more gray. In fact, you know what? I'm going to take a little white. Kind of noodle that in there. Again, barely touching the canvas. And getting that silky finish. Same thing over here. Hopefully my hair is not in the way. Although, you know, thinking about it, I should have my hair down. Because another um, facet of paint instruction videos, like Bob Ross, is having this outstanding wig do and uh, you know I got a pretty good mane although my wife won't let me wear my hair down because somehow she thinks that that's going to be a distraction she thinks that is going to be a distraction anyhow so I'm going to finish that some of these areas I can kind of just pull up from that horizon line. All I'm doing is slowing down and then I'll kind of swirl. And again, I could slow down and play with that white. But something else as you're playing with your brushes, um, you could switch back and forth between a, a round or the, you know stay with this flat or whatever. If you felt so compelled and that's kind of your thing that you wanted to go in with a, a round brush and kind of make your puffy clouds or a couple prominent clouds, you can do this. But in this instance, I'm just really making one of those um, gray days that are kind of like featureless. Gonna have a couple little streaks to kind of okay. Good with that. So let's do that just for the sake of example. I'm gonna switch. I'm taking my uh, my round. And I will. I'll, I'll put a couple little clouds in here, but I'm not going to go too nuts with that. I'm just going to take a little white, just kind of patch. And all I'm, I'm swirling my wrists while that gray paint's still wet. And you're going to find that that blends pretty well. Almost disappears into that. Get as many clouds as you want. I'm not going to do many. Uh, how about one up here? It kind of just hangs out in the space.
again, I always feel like I got to remind you as you're painting, if you're painting your sides, your tops, uh, your bottom when we get um, down that far, um, as you do paintings, if you, if you pull your image out around the sides or you feel compelled to paint your sides, you can do so. Unless you're one of those types, they're going to go out and buy a frame and maybe you want to do that because all of a sudden now you've created art and you need to have a, a proper uh, setting for your, uh, for your painting, for your masterpiece. All right, so we're going to kind of move down here to doing the snow, which, uh, oddly enough, already looks done. Huh. How about that? I'm going to take a little of this medium gray. And I just want to kind of map off these two little sections, this little alley that this wolf, or fox, rather, is going to run in. Kind of caught being pestered by these uh, crows so I just wanted to kind of map off that section and with my one inch brush uh, and if that becomes too hard of a line what I, what you can do is take just a little white on that one inch brush and just soften that line and you're just kind of making some basically dirty snow but it's a gray day so it's okay if it's a gray bank as I've mentioned before referenced it in a blog post about winter paintings is that snow reflects the light of whatever light source that it's in so if it's a sunny day the snow might be kind of warm and rosy glow if it's a gray day it's gonna look dirtier than usual so down here, I want to take just a little sky blue and mix it with the white. And I just want to add temperature to the snow. I want to make this frosty, cold snow. And I'm just putting a little of that light blue-white mixture. And I will need a little more white. Cause you don't want it to seem like you got this blue pile of snow down there. You just want it frosty. And there you go. Hopefully that's showing up on the video. All right. Yeah. You just, like I said, you want to just give a little temperature have that cold frosty snow all right now as we start switching and introducing some color the one last thing I want to do with the mid-range grays is I want to build this little area of rocky coastline because we're going to actually have some waves splash up over that so I'm going to take some gray with my round. Um, if you feel better with using a liner brush to draw with, that's fine. But I'm just gonna chunk in a little mosaic. Make some, I made a, what I've done is I have a, a medium gray. I'll do it over here where you can see. But then I'm also taking a little black to the gray. Take a little white in the gray just so that I got different types of gray. I'm putting these little rocks in there. Actually, it's a coastline. I imagine they're big rocks. switch to my liner brush I'm going to make some different size and shape marks even work a little white in there I 
working that's really wet. So that's a little juicy. We might let that dry a sec and kind of do another section and kind of come back to that. Because we could add a little detail in there and some separation among the rocks. Okay, so I'm going to make uh, this one little rogue crashing wave that's going to kind of come up over the top of these rocks. Well, actually, let's before we do that, you're going to need to actually have a color that kind of mirrors the shape of our little body of water. And we got this little sliver of this really deep blue green ocean. And how we're going to achieve that is I'm going to take a little of my phthalo blue and a little of my phthalo green, and I'm kind of mixing them in the middle. And I want to say it's an aqua color, but it's a mix of those two. Again, I got a little of that bluish white. I'm going to take a little of that and mix it in there. Right dead center in the middle that anchors the composition. I'm going to make this little arc. Now, just because I'm that type of guy, I'm going to stay with the, instead of filling that in like a chunk shape, I want that water to be kind of a little bit more character, have a little bit more character in it. So what I'm going to do is that combination of phthalo green and phthalo blue. And I remember, I have this metallic, but if you've come across something in your supplies or you bought some metallic blue, Maybe that's your jam, and you can kind of work that in there very lightly. I'm only going to go about halfway, maybe a little bit more than that. And I'm going to begin to make these little streaks. Remember, I'm keeping my brush damp, but not wringing wet. Otherwise, you're going to get drips. We can always work around the drips. But I know you guys, and you're going to get frustrated if that drips into your, 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 your snow. All I'm doing is kind of streaking. Okay, making it darker in this corner because I'm going to have it lighter towards the other side. Switching to my, my round, I'm going to kind of get these strokes anchored into the grooves of the canvas, so I'm just going to kind of cheat a little bit. Go back to my liner brush and add a little depth. And as we get over here, like I'm being kind of, I've noticed I'm kind of, my berm of snow, dirty snow, is kind of coming up and blocking that. So it's like a little mound. You might want to be cognizant of where, how big or how small your little sliver of ocean is going to be. 
I'm going to take some of that color, that compound color that I made with the phthalo blue and green or the metallic blue. I'm going to mix that with some of my muddled of gray white. And I'm going to begin to lighten this side almost to a point that it's straight white. But it's not. It's going to have a little color to it. So I'm just mixing instinct. You know, this is a part where you can kind of play. You know, mix the colors that you want, but you want that color, but just light. And we're going to need that color because, again, I'm giving this chance over here to dry. And then we're going to come back in over there and, and make this nice crashing little wave over that. All I'm doing is just staggering little, little brush strokes. Doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, it's not the end product here. You get to tell everybody that you worked on doing a Winslow Homer painting. And then you're gonna say, well, who's Winslow Homer? No, actually, I think most people know who that is. That's like Whistler or um, Edward Hopper. People will be impressed that you did this Winslow Homer looking painting. Okay. So it's one of those once you can get into doing these little swirly strokes, you can kind of get into it. Oh, here we go. So now with that color, that kind of nice aqua color, light aqua, I'm going to take my liner brush. And again, I know people like to like their writing or like their drawing. And it's drawing, but in a sense, it's a painter sensibility to drawing. So you're going to have that in my crashing waves. I'm going to kind of splash up. I know my hand's in the way, but just give me a second and get a couple of these strokes and hopefully these are showing up. And all I'm doing is dragging out from the top of my little rocks. Dirty brush. Well, not dirty. Like, I still have that green from doing that greenish blue from doing the this ocean and all I'm doing is grabbing white right off the palette and I'll do some splashy I'm doing a lot of straight white over the top of those rocks I'm making little dashes and stuff if, you, if you're not picking that up on the... That's okay. Really, I'm just scribbling and... Making little marks up there. I'm not done with that area yet, but I'm going to let that dry and we're going to kind of get into another little section. So let's map out where our fox is going to go. So we'll take a little brown. We have this brown and I know I have this copper and we're going to, we're going to give our fox a really shiny coat, but 
the first what we'll do and as I, I know I have the ghost there but I'm going to show you how I got to that ghost so we're going to take a little brown because since we're on brown there's a little mountain that goes over here too the kind of play uh, in the composition so you have this little red fox you got a little red mountain over there or brick red mountain but I'm going to take I'm, I'm still with my liner brush because I'm going to draw with this for a little bit First thing I'm going to do is kind of make this little little piece of land over there. And that's with red. Well, it's red oxide. It's going to look brown to you. Well, it's red oxide, but my wife says, no, it's brown. But it's really red oxide. Anyhow, we'll call it Sienna. Anyhow, we're going to put that in there and kind of like um, have this little and let's let's map out um, our little fox here. So <clears throat> let's not get hung up on the drawing. What we're going to do is we're going to make a little oval shape. We're going to make another little oblong shape. And then we're going to make another oblong shape. And if you want to, let's put his paw, even though we're going to do this dark, he's digging through the snow. So we're going to just do this little rectangular shape. It comes off like that. Okay, and we're done. So there's your painting. And no, I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna do that. Chirp, chirp, chirp. Hopefully, we can find. We're gonna find a way to get sound effects into some of these videos, and uh, maybe that'll bring the entertainment value up uh, fifty-eight percent. So, at this point, let, let's work. Let's concentrate on this little section up here. I'm going to take a little black I'm going to mix a little of that brown with that black it's going to make a darker brown and I just want to kind of give I'm going to drag my brush and give a little different shapes to this little mountain range over here different brush strokes Maybe fill in. Okay. Actually, I like the idea of grounding this and making this dark shape that kind of grounds this shape into the landscape. Switch into my round brush. I might even snow cap this. So I'm just going to kind of take a little, I took a little of that brown, reddish brown. Can we go with that? And then scribble in some of that. Yeah, a little snow in there or some. It's a different kind of drawing, but these are the little marks and hash marks and um, the little marks that you make kind of give a little character to the, to the painting that you're doing. So like this, I'm just going to do one of that, one of those. I don't know if that makes any sense. Why not? Yeah. You 
You know what I was also thinking about doing as I do these videos is we should have a, um, a review of whatever it is that you're drinking and a, and a small critique of what you're um, drinking and how you kind of groove on that, like a beer review or some sort of cocktail or... Right. Okay. I'm currently not drinking. Maybe that's why this video is coming across like dry white toast. So let's color in our fox or give him a base coat. I am going to use my saber brush. Again, you could use your round or your detail brush, but I'm just going to kind of give him a little a little volume here. So where I'm going to start is on his back here, but I'm I'm kind of pulling some of this color throughout his body. Again, you could take a round brush and probably just fill this in, but I feel good with the saber brush. Like I feel like that's my... We'll add some um, dark colors and kind of give him a little black definition. Add to the line quality a little bit, but I'm just kind of filling this part in first. See, I got a nice versatility with this brush. I can kind of... So what this does, and um, when I've painted with you guys at events, and any time that we've done anything with metallic paint, you put a base coat down. So if you were doing silver, say, you put a base coat of gray down, then you put the silver on top of it, and that's what makes it that really shiny. If I was painting with just straight metallics, you wouldn't even, it wouldn't even, I don't even think it would show up that well on, on the video. I'm pulling this guy, pulling, the, getting these hairs. There we go. Switched my, uh, my round. Right up the middle there. On this side, I'm just kind of doing one of those. So hopefully we're all on point with that. I have some of the uh, dark brown that I mixed by using some of that lighter brown with black. that shows up so I'm gonna kind of go in here I'm gonna start here not too much I want to get his ears in there so we should probably do that and ears are just ears got an ear there ear there And make his ears a little bigger. I'm doing this while this paint's still wet. I'm just taking that dark brown. And I'm just patching it on there. We can get a little bit more refined with our strokes. But I'm just going for tone. All right? I'm going to separate where his head's going to go. Maybe he's got a little streak or a little patch of darker hair up there. Same thing, we're going to go on this back side here where his tail is. just pulling 
I'm not literally doing this and drawing all these thin little lines. If that's your thing, I know that probably didn't show up, but if that's your thing, have at it. But you can do a lot just by repetitive motions and just pulling that. I'm going to give a tip of his tail that's going to be white. Now I'm going to kind of slow down a little bit and kind of go in and fill in the spots where you can kind of see the canvas, I guess. You can use a round brush and again, color in as if you're like, like coloring in a coloring book. I like to use a small brush and kind of use a lot of brush strokes. Again, I just think that adds to the quality of the painting, however that's worth. I think that's worth a lot. Again, every half a dozen licks of this with your brush and your detail brush, you'll probably have to get it wet. And give them a little fluffy mane up here. I'm using the liner brush, dark brown. Okay. Just like when you're doing any other little busy work with doing leaves or doing flower petals or any of that stuff, you can get lost in the brush strokes. You can kind of find that you can really kind of take your time. And again, one of the benefits of doing this on video, you can stop and start as much as you want. We'll come back to black and we'll finish this in a second. Um, while I have that brown the way I want it, I'm going to take just a little white and uh, mix it and make a light. Got a piece of my brush came off. So I'm taking a I'm gonna give it just a little highlight around the top where his ears are. He's an older he's an older fox. He's a silver haired fox. Like somebody else I know. Actually, I don't have silver hair. I'm just a fox. So I'm gonna do just a little of that around the... Oh yeah, we gotta give this guy a little paw. So we're gonna, we're gonna give him a little paw up here. Again, it's your painting. Um, if you want this fox to kind of get away uh, from these crows that are pestering them, you could probably paint a little snowshoe on the, on the fox. Or skis. If some of you have been painting for a while and maybe had the privilege of going to art school, you want to put your fox on a snowmobile. I'm not going to show you how to draw a snowmobile. I'm just saying, you know, you might be three fingers into a bottle of bourbon and decide, hey, what the hell, I'm going to go for it. Okay. 
All right. And I want to give him a white little tip down here on his tail. Okay, I'm just pull. I know this is going to be tough because it's white on white. I'm just pulling that, making that, and I can go back in and grab some of that brown and fleck that along with the white. I'll move away from it, see how that looks. We're going to let that sit for a second. Just kidding. I'm going to do a little more. I want it, you know, give them a little. All right. Be back to that in a minute. So. Before we get into the crows um, and don't fret the crows um, it's this really dark coupling of silhouettes of, of a murder of crows that are up in the upper right hand section of this we'll, we'll break that down section by section while you have that brown that dark brown something too that's off in the distance that's just kind of um, is these little branches There's like some little berry bush or something that's kind of out in space there so I'm just gonna kind of quick throw those in there you don't have to worry about making foliage unless you want to I mean it's perfectly fine in fact I'm gonna grab just a tad a very little, little, little bit of red. I'm going to make these little berries, I guess. Straight red. I didn't put it in the beginning of the video because it's like, I don't know, kind of, you could probably get away with using brown or, but all I'm doing is going to give couple little I want them kind of wet really not too much rhyme or reason Again, you can put as many as you want in there, I guess. Enough of that nonsense. So let's work on our crows or ravens or however you want to define those. So I'm going to make sure I got a little doll up of black. Okay. Again, it's the strange shape of these birds kind of flock together. So we're only really kind of adding any level of detail really to just two of them that are in the foreground. Like I said, let's just take it step by step. So I'm going to take a little black on my brush. You figure right up, say, around here. An oval. Off of that oval. A 
And then you have that triangular where his beak is going to go. He's kind of getting ready to, well, I'm getting ready to land. He's going to get ready to land. And I had my little ghost in there. I was kind of... Again, it's okay. You can make corrections on the fly. You want to make the head a little bigger. Is everybody with me? Begin with the wing. We'll do the one big wing. It is going to be the top of his wing. It's going to come right off the page. Let's go there. This one's going to go back into space a little. Okay. And even though that you have that, you're going to kind of have to, you know, stay focused. Like over here around this side of the wing, you got another one. Right? Actually, those are very close to level. I don't think I, I'm going to go with that. So I'm going to make this wing bigger. That's as easily as how that gets fixed. If you feel like you want to kind of make a correction. I want this head to be a little lower. I may even want it coming out some. So then you imagine where his wing is going to go. I know it's going to get a little garbled, but just stay with me. Don't worry about the anatomy or how that's going to... We'll add a little definition in there. Go ahead and fill that silhouette in. So how I'm going to do that... Is I'm just going to drag that rich... Black. It's Mars Black. Again, if there's proficient painters, more experienced painters, I myself wouldn't normally, if I was making black, my favorite black is alizarin crimson and phthalo green. That makes such a rich, rich black color, black looking color, instead of just using black out of the tube. I know you're probably not picking it up, I don't have to f go all the way to that line. I'm almost leaving myself a spot. And we'll come back and we're going to put some gray lines in there. We're going to kind of, you know, redefine some of these, uh, or the separation of these two birds. But you are kind of just making this big black lump. A little bit where his wings are going to go.
color that in a little bit. Now I'm going to switch. I'm going to go back to my liner brush. I want to get some tight lines. Particularly with this guy up here. This is where a little bit of, if you got a quirky kind of drawing style, this is where it's going to kind of be a benefit for you because, again, this is a little bit more about the character of your, of your painting. See, so, and I can make some sharp edges. Same thing here. Tighten up some of these lines. Okay. Again, I know probably uh, seeing the, you know, watching it through the lens of a video, it is looks like two big black blobs. But there's birds in there. Trust me. So just want to add a little bit of detail, you know, feathers and such. All right, before I finish off with that, I want to come back to my wolf and give him a little treatment, a little love. Did I say wolf or fox? Fox. Yeah, if it was a wolf, this situation would be entirely different. Because that wolf would be chasing those sons of bitches around. But it's not. It's a fox, so they feel compelled that they can bully this fox. So I'm, I'm coloring his ears, giving him his little black ears. Same motion, I'm pulling away. He's going to have this nice black paw or leg. Actually, his paw is white. Let's see. Boot. Let's call him his leg. He's going to have a nice little black little boot. All right. Again, you can cheat a little and then slow down and color that in. Taking just that liner brush and just kind of going up around this paw a little. Give it a little definition down here. Again, don't feel like you got to go and like outline everything. So every fox is going to have different markings. So maybe this guy is a little darker. Same thing here. I kind of go up around this tail a little bit. Kind of give him his little bushy tail. Okay, now if that wasn't exciting enough, way back in the beginning of this, I said I had copper. So what I'm going to do with my round brush, well, I want to make sure I get all the black out of my round brush. I'm going to take some of that copper. I'm going to begin to paddle Little, little brush strokes and give him a really super shiny coat. Let's 
switch brushes again. And I just want to go in the tail, give his tail a little, a little copper. The last thing we're going to do is I'm going to make a little gray, thinking ahead of the next step. We're going to make a little gray and kind of go in and define some areas on um, our crows. All right. I think that's a nice color. All right. So with my liner brush, I'm gonna find a little black, a little white, make a little gray, you know, nothing to it. Okay, well, you're not going to be able to see it. It's going to look like white on the... I'm just saying. Um, visualize taking a little black. Visualize. No, just, take, just take a little black. A little white, and you're going to mix gray. Unless you got some, again, gray out of the tube, whatever, how that, however that works. So we're just going to kind of go and just a couple of little... Kind of gave him his, you know, I don't know if that, hopefully that's showing up. I'm just taking a little uh, of that gray. And scribbling in. Some of that where his feathers are ruffling and kind of getting ready to land and I'm really just scribbling. And we're going to finish our murder by using our liner brush, taking some of that straight black. couple of little V's kind of simulate other crows. You can be as big or as small. Again as many or as few as you want, I suppose. black. I did not forget about my little cliff line over here. I so said this is just preening at this point. It's kind of adding all the little details that I wanted. So I'm going to kind of add a little of this detail up to the top of this cliff line. Because that contrast is what makes that crashing wave a little a little bit more visible. Just a little definition up there. Again, maybe a thicker line. Just to kind of ground that a little bit. So, yeah. And it's the same thing with the brown mountain on the other side. If you feel so compelled to kind of give that a one last little pass, to kind of give that a little treat. 
treatment, little, little, I said weight, keep it grounded a little bit. And and that is fox hunt, and we'll do the kind of how this show how this compares with the original. Actually, I like this fox better. He's bigger and more prominent in the frame. So hopefully, this is showing up here. So here, oh, let me see if I can pull myself out of the way. So again, a little different, but the size of your wolf, wolf, fox, size of your crows, the placement of your crows um, is really up to you. You're the artist. So, but that is HW Fox Hunt. And I hope to see you soon for the next video. Oh, let's do that. Until then, stay safe, and we'll see you soon.